Editing plays and dramatic stuff by the video guy. Greetings, LibriVoxers. Hello, this is Phil Chenever, the LibriVox video guy. And I'm going to be showing you how I edit together plays and dramatic readings of novels. Now, this doesn't mean it's the best way. It's just what I've found works best for me and produces some pretty good dramatic tracks. Now, in LibriVox, <clears throat> we're able to produce both plays and dramatic works. In fact, I just checked our catalog, and there's about 220 plays that have been done that way, and dramatic novels. Dramatic works are novels, but they're read like plays, where with one character being read by one person. Each person records their lines for each chapter. There you go, I'll show you. And these different recordings are then put together to sound like a, well, like a dramatic reading. The person who puts it together is called the editor, and hopefully you're interested in that. Now, if you're watching this, it means you are interested in helping edit plays or dramatic works. So I'm going to be rather basic and understand, once again, this is just how I, how I do it after a great deal of trial and error. Now, I'm currently editing Emma by Jane Austen, some new novelist, apparently, and so that will be my example. The first thing I do is to make a folder on, well, wherever I want. I, I put mine on my desktop. This should show, these are my Emma completed chapters, and this is the, the chapter I'm working with. Currently, that is empty. So the first thing is to make your folder to put stuff in. You can put your folder anywhere you want. I put it on my desktop because I lose stuff. I know, it's amazing, but it's true. Now here is the project, and notice that each character has recorded his or her lines. For example, the narrator, Mr. Henry Woodhouse, has recorded all of his lines in every chapter. Emma Woodhouse has recorded her lines in whew, a lot of lines. Mr. George Knightley, and so forth. Every person records the lines for a separate chapter. Now, this is a huge book, so instead of just chapters, it has volumes. <laughs> volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. Since you, as the editor, will be putting together a chapter at a time, the first thing is to download everything that will um, be included in that chapter. Now, I'm working on Volume 1, Chapter 6, and I went through and checked. There's about seven people that are that speak in that line. So I'm going to download all of them to my Emma chapter, Emma, Emma, or Emma, Emma folder. I'm downloading the narrator right now. Now, Mr. Wodehouse has something, so I will download him. Uh, Mr. George Knightley has, yes, Volume 1, Chapter 6. Harriet Smith, Volume 1, Chapter 6, yes. That's all. I'm just putting everything to where I can get to it. Volume 1, Chapter 6. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Nope. Now this this character doesn't have anything in there. This character doesn't have anything. Volume 1. This character doesn't have anything. Okay, that's it. We now have every um, chapter. So all seven files should be in my folder here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Good. Now, to edit them all together, I need a framework to put them in. For a play or a dramatized book, I use the narrator for the frame, if there is one. If a book has no narrator voice, I use the person with the most verbiage. Here, of course, there is a narrator. There we go. So I open that track. Now, 
Then, aha, a file I rename this sucker Save Project As, or I just say Save Project, it'll ask me for a name. Now I'm going to name it Emma Volume 1, Check 6, Master, and it will be saved in the same folder. So the narrator has been saved as a master, and everything's going to be stuck into the middle here to make this one long file. The next step is to just drop the parts into the right places in sequence, not bothering at all with spacing or any accuracy or anything, just to put the parts where they belong. The second and harder part will be to listen to the whole track and um, actually make it sound good. So let's open up the Emma. Emma. Uh, chapter, oh, volume two. I want volume one. Chapter six. Here we go. Open up my master and then listen to it. Let's see if I can listen to that. Volume 1, Chapter 6 of Emma by Jane Austen. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Volume 1, Chapter 6. Emma could not feel a doubt of having given Harriet's fancy a proper direction and... Okay, now I see that there's a huge, not huge, a large thing here. Now, when I'm just sticking things in, I just go right to the end. Agreeable proofs of his growing okay. attachment. Now at this point, I know that he's talking to, she's talking to, uh, that's one of the problems with this particular book. They don't tell you who's speaking. I assume that's Mr. Elton. So therefore, I will open up Mr. Elton. Who is Mr. Elton? Philip Elton. I notice I have everything running. Let's see what this sounds like. Mr. Philip Elton, read by Chris Marcellus. You have given Miss Smith all that she required. You have made her graceful and easy. She was a... Yeah, that's it. You have given... So this is it. Now, I'll take this opportunity to... point out that different recorders are going to have different volumes. This is rather loud. Um, as an editor, you have the job and the opportunity of making things sound better. You have given Miss Smith all that if she you required. This volume to the narrator, it's going to blow everything out. Um, since this whole track is like that, I'm probably going to drop that down a little bit by running a compressor on it. Mr. Philip Elton, read yeah, by Chris Marcellus. I'm going to leave it like that. I know I've got a lot of stuff on here. You have given Miss Smith all that she required. You have given Miss Smith all that she required. Now, you notice I said he. The narrator is going to have that part. So I'm going, to, I'm going to delete this. Now, I delete from the track as I go along to show that they're done. I'm not really going to delete anything. It'll all be there after it's finished. But temporarily, I'm going to be have a control X open up my master attachment okay so it's going to go right there control V should do it you have given Miss Smith all that she required and we said she said he said he okay and next I'm going to open up um, Mr. Philip again You have made her graceful, graceful and, and easy. easy. She was a beautiful creature when she came to you, but in my opinion, the attractions you have added are infinitely superior to what she received from nature. So once again, Control X, open up my master, Control V, paste it in there. And let's see. Said the gallant Mr. Elton. Okay. 
Okay, at this point, um, this is going to be spoken by Emma, I believe. I am glad you think I have been useful to her. But Harriet only wanted drawing out, and receiving a few, very few, hints. She had all the natural grace of sweetness of temper and artlessness in herself. I have done very little. Okay. Let's zoom in on that one. And once again, control X, open up my master, and stick it in. She had all the natural grace of sweetness of temper and artlessness in herself. I have done very little. Um, Mr. Elton comes next. Let's open up Mr. Elton. Wrong one. And let's see, it says, if it were permissible. If it were admissible to contradict the lady. X. Open up my master. And stick it in. Said the gallant Mr. Elton. Okay, as you go along, this is what you do. You basically run through and stick them in, don't worry, not worrying at all about the spacing or anything else. Um, once you have all of the characters in and, and it's done, at that point, I would look at it and determine whether or not there is, whether it needs to be volume changed a little bit. Go back to the beginning and start listening for silences Volume and spaces. Volume 1, Chapter 6 of Emma by Jane Austen. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Volume 1, Chapter 6. Emma could not feel a doubt of Volume 4. She was quite convinced of Miss growing attachment. You have given Miss Smith all that she required, said he. Well, Obviously, this need, I'm going to cut that out. If you want to wonder what I'm doing, I'm cutting that out. You have given Miss Smith all that she required, said he. You have made her graceful. A little too much in there. All that she required, said he. You have made her graceful and easy. She was a beautiful creature when she came to you. Okay, at this point, um, this is still a little tiny bit loud. So I might deamplify that by um, 1.5. No, not, not enough. Minus 2. There you go. With his growing attachment. You have given Miss Smith all... I am glad you think I have been useful to her. But Harriet only wanted drawing out. So this is what editing is. You listen. You have Harriet's picture. Said she. Um, obviously you cut out the spaces to make it sound reasonable. Gonna rely on your ear here. Seconded a sudden wish of hers to have Harriet's picture. Said she. See, so yeah, to me that's... Harriet's picture. Said she. Yeah, that's, that's better. You use your ear and judge the spaces, cut them down, maybe increase them in spots. Um, try to get the volume as level as you can. It doesn't have to be perfectly level. Different people speak with different voices. Um, I might compress this a tiny bit more and then amplify it a little bit. I don't know. I'll just mess with it. But at that point, then you would export it as a, um, a volume one chapter six Emma using the format that is shown using the format that they tell you to use here and upload it put it put a note to saying this is chapter one let me see if we have a chapter here I can show you yeah chapter one I mean volume one chapter seven is uploaded here you go um, David did this one and this is what it looks like this is the the name and it will be put into the magic window for somebody to proof listen to. Now sometimes you will discover a missing word. You'll be listening real hard and watching and there'll be something said she may be left out. At that point you put, you put a notice, you post a response in the thread saying 
giving the exact spot where it is and saying please re please record that for me and somebody will record it and then you have to stick it in well that's basically how i edit and i hope that you jump in we always need good editors and um thank you for volunteering with librivox